Hi everyone and uh, welcome to Lecture 11. This will be the last video lecture that you will receive for the course. In um, Usually in week 12 we just hand back things and we chat or what have you uh, and obviously hand in the papers, the uh, late papers, but um, because we're doing all this electronically all right, there's no need for that. So as I said this will be the last lecture of the, of the, uh, the term. All right and it's not really a lecture today. As, as you can see from the title, you've got the notes, I sent them to you. We're just gonna do some reminders, that's all. Things to, to keep in mind, because your final paper is worth 30% of your overall grade. That, that's a big chunk, right, when it, when it comes to uh, the grading. And so, I just wanna make sure, you know, we're all on board, you, you know what I'm looking for. Although, I think by now, the, one point I wanna make very clearly, you, you might wanna take advantage of the late uh, option, only because I don't know how much of my feedback from the final paper is going to help you. For Well, it's not for this course. That's why I put so many comments on your outlines, especially on the second outline that was worth 25%. Because I figured if I have enough feedback, for, if I give you enough feedback on the outline, then you'll be able to incorporate that into the paper. Obviously, the choice is yours, but I realize that as we get closer to the end of term, you're going to have a thousand things do, right, in other courses, right, as well as mine. So feel free to take advantage of that, it, it, you know, if you if you think you could use the extra time. The extra time can never hurt, all right? Again, your call, your call, um, but but I would, I'll certainly understand. Don't worry about that, all right? Okay, so today, uh, what, 25 minutes, maybe half an hour at the most? We're going to just talk about the key elements that, that, that we want to remind ourselves of. Okay, what's the title of the, of the lecture? Reminders. But we want we want to think about the key elements, right? That can get you the highest possible grade, right? So that's what we're going to do. Only four pages, right? So as I said, we'll see how long it takes. All right. And so let's start at the very beginning. Okay, where else would you start but at the beginning? Your title. Now, ironically, your title is something you won't be able to write until you've written the paper. Right? Okay. I, th I think I made that clear as well in the lectures. Right? Like, if you come up with a title before you've done ever anything else, well, it's kind of like creating your introduction before you do anything else. Remember, we talked about that. And so, but eventually, eventually, if you've done all the work that I have suggested okay, in, in terms of the process of writing, if you've done all that, well, then your title should now more or less be a reflection of your thesis. So you, you reinforce to the reader okay, what the reader will be reading and why. And so watch out for flashy titles. You know, the, uh, I think the word I used long time ago in the lectures was a grabber. Don't do stuff like that. Again, I think the word I used was that's high schoolish. All right. So instead, give a good strong title that reflects your thesis. They should work, you know, in conjunction with each other. All right. And so. Again, and, and the, the, the title will suggest will suggest the argument in the paper. Now, the title won't be a word for word okay, uh, uh, reflection of your thesis, right? You don't want to just write your thesis as your title, but I think you get the idea. But all right, okay. Then we move on. So now that we have our title, and remember what MLA style looks like, this is all on the same page, right? Remember, you have all your information on the top left your name, my name. Right, of course, number and all of that. Then you have your title. Okay, then we get right into it. And remember, okay, we talked about this tab. Tab your first, uh, your your first paragraph. Even though I know MLA says not to. Remember, we talked about that. That was for an abstract. Okay, so watch out for that as well. Okay, good. So your introduction. Well, remember we talked about there are three elements in an introduction. Not three sentences necessarily, but three elements. And those three elements include a general opening statement. Okay. Again, if you've watched the lectures, you, there, there's really no need to email me saying, well, what did you mean by that? If you watch the lectures, you know exactly what I mean by that, right? So we have, I think we talked about feminism with a general opening statement. I gave you a, a few examples, right? And I think, I think, anyway. And, and make sure the introduction is one, one paragraph. Again, some of you have that habit of having an almost like an introductory paragraph before your introduction. The preamble. Don't do that. All right. So we have a general opening statement. Then we have the sections we're going to work through. And again, each of again, each of us has, has our own style. 
as to how we go about that, right? Your sections. But again, I, I've made that so clear with you guys, all right? And if you recall, where did we first introduce notions of sections? It was actually in your first outline in a weird way. Remember, right? Then you were supposed to incorporate that into your paper. Okay. And then finally, you have your thesis. And we talked about the idea that, like I said, each of you have, has your own style. Some of you like to blend the sections and the thesis together. Some people like them separate, right? I like them to have them separate. But again, that's just a stylistic thing. So remember, as long as you have all the elements in your, in your introduction, then you're fine. Okay. Now the thesis. And this is something I noticed probably, I'd say half the papers, half the first set of papers, didn't really understand the thesis, how the thesis really works. You have to come up with something on your own that answers the question, and now notice I have it bolded here, that answers the question, why? Why does a particular thing happen in a story? So, if your thesis in the first paper was something like, we're doing Paul's case, okay? Just doing it off the top of my head. We're doing Paul's case, and your thesis was, Paul is a troubled individual. See how that, that, that's not really getting at the why. You then have to answer the question, why is Paul the way he is? And that takes it one step further. So that goes from being a C paper by simply saying he's a troubled individual and then maybe having some quotes showing that he's troubled to answering the question why. Well, now that takes us into the B range. Or depending upon how sophisticated we are with answering the question why, that could take us into the A range, right? Remember, it all works together, okay? So that there's your C, your B, and your A. And so that was another thing I noticed. One or two of you wanted, wanted, one, you wanted me to send you some kind of rubric. I, again, that's kind of high school stuff, all right? I don't have a rubric other than what I showed you at the end of the course outline, right? This is a D or an F, okay? This is a, C, a D, a C, a B, an A. And the other thing as well, sorry, that cold that I had before is still with me. That, that other thing that I told you before, remember, you don't start at 100 and start taking points off. <laughs> so, again, don't email me, where did I lose my, you know, 20 points? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. All right. I think I went that th through that with you before. All right. So, obviously, uh, you want to answer the question why. The answer, if you answer the question okay, of why something is happening, that becomes your argument, that becomes your case. Remember, and when we talked about thesis statements, makes a case. That's what an argument does. Okay? And so, when you're setting up the beginnings of your paper then, okay, I'm still on page one, you might have some key terms. Okay, well then remember, don't hold off on those. Let's just say you're using Lacan. Don't hold off, right? That should come right at the, you know, the, the beginning of the body, which would be your second paragraph. Avoid contrast and comparison. That's not what I'm looking for. And as a matter of fact, I, I think we talked a tiny bit about that. In, my, in other writing courses, I actually have a whole evening where I talk about comparative analysis. Okay? I can't remember if we did that or not. But anyway, don't do that. Right, because that gets you into a problem then in terms of argumentation. Many comparative analyses don't don't have an argument. Obviously, what's the one thing I'm looking for in this final paper? An argument. So watch out for that. I'm on page two now. I don't think there's any need really to introduce biographical material. Maybe if you're doing something on D.H. Lawrence, maybe. But again, don't rewrite your class notes. Okay. I don't want to say too much about that, but if you remember, I talked about a few things in, in Lawrence's life, right, on capitalism and things like that. Don't just rewrite your class notes. The minute you start doing that, just thinking that that's good enough to define your terms or whatever, no, not to get a very high grade, okay? So be careful of that too. And, and I would argue for a first-year paper, there's, there's probably no need for uh, biographical material, not, not, not at least not with a paper as small as ours, right, okay? And if you're looking for the length of papers and all that, that's all in the course outline. Okay. Don't retell the plot. I, I know that's maybe the hardest thing to figure out in an English paper, right? Because when you re like you, when you retell the plot, basically all all you're doing is showing the 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 reader, okay, what is apparent, what is obvious, 
And keep in mind, right, when you write a paper for any prof, whether it be for English or anything else, the prof will know, know the material. You don't have to explain a whole lot. So instead, it's making your case. There, that, that's how you make your grade. Okay? Yeah. Blend small quotes. You don't need block quotes. You know, those big indented quotes. You don't need stuff like that in a first year paper. So instead, blend small quotes, okay, with your own words. Okay, much easier to do that way. And on the top of page three, I'll, I'll remind you of how you do that in terms of documentation. Watch out for symbolism. Okay, we, we, we talked at length on that. So, if you're writing on the, uh, on the rocking horse winner, you'll probably, you, you may want to write on the rocking horse itself, okay? But don't just explain the symbolism of the rocking horse. Like, they don't make that the focus of your essay. Instead, make sure you have your argument, okay, the case that you're making. Then maybe you bring the rocking horse in, the actual rocking horse, maybe you bring that in as one small point. Okay, or maybe a paragraph or what have you. Again, these are the kind of things you keep emailing me about. Every situation is different, so, so I can't give you one definitive answer of how to do that. But for the most part, you can bring the rocking horse into it, but don't make sim an explanation of all the symbols in the story your entire paper. Do not do that. Okay? Okay. And so, instead, yeah, maybe the rocking horse adds to, okay, why something is going on. Okay, and again, again I, I could give you a thousand different examples, but we've been through it when we did the lecture. And so, yeah, so how does that symbol then reinforce an underlying theme okay, that you were able to figure out? And the underlying theme, that's your argument. Okay, so that's kind of how it works for all that. Again, I know I'm repeating myself, okay, just reminders. Okay, and obviously, yeah, that, as you can see here, that takes a bit of work on your part, doesn't it? Right? It asks you to go beyond the story. And you got to remember again, so obviously there's a difference between a C paper and an A paper. The C paper you probably don't have to put, you really don't have to put in a lot of time. Right? An A paper, you do. Right? And I think, I think we began with that. When I was even doing the, um, the course outline, okay, the very first day that we met, I, I was talking about that. Remember how in high school, if, if your English teacher liked you and all of that, it doesn't work that way here, okay? Or at least it doesn't work that way with me, okay? Like I don't, I, I don't play favorites or anything like that. And so, all right, so let's think then just about a bit of style now, okay? The sections of the argument. We're just going to get a bit more specific, that's all. So remember to be consistent, okay? Um, and that was something I talked about in lecture 10. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, it, it, it was called, if you remember, it was parallelism, but for some reason I couldn't get that word out of my mouth. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, so parallel construction. All I mean by that is when you're laying out your sections of the argument, just be consistent in how you do that. Okay, that's all. And yeah, it's not a bad idea. I tried to show you that in your outlines. If you, if you really figured out how to put a really good outline together, your subject headings, or what I call umbrella terms, were probably quite succinct, which means short, right? To the point. And so if you set your outline up properly like that, and I, that, that's the feedback I would have given you, right? I would have said, perfect, like this is exactly how you want to lay out the argument in your, in your introduction. If you're nice and succinct, right? Then the introduction, as I said, the, the, the diction, okay? Choice of words, all of these things come together nice and clearly okay succinct short right to the point to the point okay is the best way of thinking about that all right definitions we had what an hour on that okay maybe not quite an hour but i think i showed you exactly where definitions go okay hang on a sec hmm. ah, sorry about that yeah this cold has been driving me nuts anyway and so yeah with definitions any theory Again, you know, something you used or took from another course or the Lacan that I showed you or the Freud or whatever, get that up in the paper. Don't wait till the end of the paper because now that you have your own argument, well, then those other individuals help you to create a foundation. Okay. And that was probably the word 
that I put on either your first or second outline. Okay, what is foundation? What is the foundation? Okay, so um, so so remember that one. That that's really important as well. Okay, so don't hold off on stuff like that. All right, get it right up there. Not not in the introduction. Not in the introduction, but right in the first paragraph after the introduction. Okay, so your second introduction, first body paragraph. That's where all that goes. And and then you start to blend right with the primary text and all that. All right. So, so there's the balance right there. You don't want to spend too much time on the theory. Again, pretend that I know the theory, even if it's something I've never seen before, even if it's something that maybe I, I, I'm not familiar with, don't worry. Go ahead and use what you need in order to make your argument. Okay? And I, I think I made that clear as well in the, in the course, but if I didn't, take for granted, no matter what theory you're talking about, I know it. Okay? That, it's not true, that's not true. What I mean, though, is you don't want to take half your paper explaining a theory and then saying, oh, and by the way, right, uh, the main character falls into the, the, these categories. No, don't do that. So pretend that I know. Okay, pretend that I know it. Pull out from the theory only what you need in order to prove your case. Okay, good, good. I'm, I'm glad I made that clear because that can be a problem sometimes, especially on the second paper, where we try to do too much, right? So, again, pull out what you need. Pretend that I know it, okay? But it, but it's crucial that you pull out the proper quotes, okay? Even if I'm not familiar with the material, you still have to pull out the proper quotes from whatever you're dealing with and in, in make sure they apply to whatever argument you're making, okay? Yeah, that, that's important. And then remember, the more specific you are, if you're using, say, a key term, and by the way, the if you're using a term for a first-year paper, Oxford English Dictionary, that's good enough. All right, good enough. Later on, if you remain in English, it, it, you have to go beyond that, okay? Um, and that's where we talked a bit about reference texts and all that, but for a first year course, we won't worry about that. All right, if, and for all of you, regardless if you're an English major or not, if you have a definition that you, you, you need, Oxford English Dictionary will probably do the job. But again, make sure you get the right definition. Remember, I talked a bit about that too. You don't want to be general with your definitions, even if it does come from the Oxford English Dictionary. You want to make sure you're choosing the definition that really applies to your argument. Okay? Good. Okay. I'm, I'm glad we're doing these reminders now. This will help you to put your paper together, I think. All right? Good. Okay. Quoting. Well, we talked about that. And I would hope by now we don't have to worry too much about that. But just make sure you properly document your sources. But remember that I also gave you a bit of a break because we're doing this online, I said, don't get too hung up on, if it comes from a collection, go ahead and just put Lawrence 408. Go, like, I, know it's, I know it's not 100% the proper way of doing it, but because of circumstances, it would take us forever to figure out stuff like that unless we were actually in the classroom, right? So go ahead and feel free to do it that way, right? You can, so, and you'll see that at the top of page three, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, just wanna make sure. And obviously, if you want to get a passing grade, or at least you, if you want to get more than a D, you want to have quotes from at least the primary source, meaning the short story. So let's go to the top of page three now. Yeah, I had a funny feeling it would take about 20, 25 minutes. We'll have some closing remarks as well. So there it is, all right? I uh, double-checked this before I did this lecture. And in fact, the most up-to-date MLA, okay, I, I literally, 20 minutes before I started doing this lecture, I went to the MLA, and that is how you do it. So you have the author last name and the page number, okay? It's nothing else. Obviously in parentheses, and I showed you in paragraphing how there's about three or four different ways you could do that. If you remember, I was talking about Wordsworth, right? So if you're unsure, remember, I was suggesting if you make it clear who's doing the speaking and where it's coming from, right? And, and it, it not, let, let me put that in another way. If you make it clear where the quote is coming from, so by saying Wordsworth once stated, right? And then you give a quote, you're allowed to just put 22. Okay, I hope you all understand that. If you watch the lecture, you should. Um, and then there were a couple of other ways as well. Remember I suggested that it's, it's almost as if MLA kind of shifted a bit towards the way APA does it. Okay, and again, these are all new. This is all new, okay? New, relatively new, I should say. I didn't quote this way at all when I was going through university, all right? Back in 1928, but anyway, all right. And so there's an example I give you there. And as I said, I double-checked this. So, okay, the, the fact that, quote, there must be more money 
and then Lawrence 408. But we could have done that three, three, three or four different ways. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about, go back and look at paragraphing. I believe it's lecture five. Pretty sure. Okay. And then in lecture two, go back as well. If you have questions, notice before I get to that bolded element at the bottom, the, the difference between arguing and explaining. Well, if you still don't haven't quite gotten that by now, you'll find that in the lecture on, on uh, analyzing literature. So that would have been probably week two, I think. Remember we had, it was a bit top heavy at the beginning of the course where it was all, uh, like I was sending you two lectures at a time, okay? So that week two or three, but, but it's right there. Like, like all, all you have to do is look on the course outline where it says analyzing literature and then correspond that with the, the lecture number, right? It's all clear. Okay, all right. And so that's almost it, that's almost it. Let's finish off page three and page four, and then we'll just have some closing remarks, okay? There are three elements that go into any strong paper. There's you, there's the short story, or what we call in English, the primary text, and then maybe secondary material. And all I mean by secondary material for English simply means your research, if you happen to do any. So, just a quick reminder, don't go to our, if you want to get a high grade, don't go to the database. If you want to do something on sexuality in Lawrence, I mean, it, it, we went through that. There's so much in there, right? You don't want to go and type in sexuality, Lauren, D.H. Lawrence, because if you do that, then if you remember what I talked about really early on in, in, in the course, that the who's ever writing that paper, okay, that article, their voice will end up taking over the paper, okay, your paper. So instead, come up with your own idea first. Then maybe, and, and how do you do that? After you've read the story a couple of times, you start asking some questions. Remember, we talked about that. And so you start asking some questions, and maybe somehow you'll come up with your own insight, okay? Then if you think you know something, I remember in psychology we talked a bit about X. Well, then maybe why not go look up X, okay? In other words, whatever the subject matter is, if you think then that that actually is the problem, we talked a bit about that with Paul's case, right? And so, and the same thing applies for these two here. All right, so again, you want to, your voice wants to come through, but then you'll utilize the primary text, the short story, because by quoting from the short story, you're not just saying these things are hap happening, you're, you're arguing, here's my proof, okay? Remember, when you quote from the story, it's not an example, okay? That's a different type of writing, it's proof, and you should use it as such. So what was the one phrase I said to avoid in the essay, okay, in your, in any essay for English, for example, don't use that phrase. Then finally, we have our secondary sources. And all I mean by that would be maybe, maybe you use Lacan, okay? And by the way, if you use Lacan in the first paper, feel free to use them again. Doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to show you how to write a really good paper, right? The argument will obviously be different, like, because you're writing on a different short story, but, and by the way, you should be writing on the stories that, that we've talked about. Um, and so, as I said, feel free to use Lacan. Okay, if you want to use them twice, that's fine with me. I don't care. And then finally, though, don't let the secondary material, the, your research, don't let that take over the entire paper. As you can see, the sun is starting to come through again. So I have to, I have to hurry up at the end of this lecture, right? Oh, no, I was able to block it out before. Remember? Anyway. And so, yeah, so watch out for that. If you're using theory, that's fine. But again, make sure your voice is pushing it along. And so, um, finally, you have your work cited. And if, if you're still a bit confused on the work cited, well, remember, I, I have that sheet for you on CU Learn. Remember, the, 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 there's a, a page there where it shows you how to cite different things. So make sure you have a proper work cited at the end. And obviously, if you are going to get a, a better than a C in the course, right, then you will have a work cited because you will have cited from certain
texts um, at, a, at a minimum the short story and so um, yeah only cite only including the works cited works you've actually quoted okay I know when you do reference reference sheets and all of that it gets a bit more sophisticated but for a first year course in in English that's all you need actual things you've cited okay and I think that takes us from the beginning to the end right we start with the title to the work cited that's the paper that's the entire paper and so just a couple of closing remarks um, it's been a struggle for all of us for all of us right you guys especially right but it but it's been a struggle for for Prost at the at our end as well for administration for for so many different things and so I hope I hope I was able to take you through the course and I was clear enough in in my direction because as I said online learning can be can be well there's a reason why they call it distance learning right you really do feel like you're at a distance and so um, I just want to close off by saying good luck not only with the final paper not only with this course but with the rest of your academic careers all right we don't know the future we, we we don't know right when things will I hate using the word normal because I don't know if we'll ever go back to whatever normal means okay uh, I, I'd never like that word anyway uh, but 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 good luck right and um, I, I think I think for the most part you know things will will settle down maybe that's the best way to say it it's amazing how people can adapt all right but if you are struggling as I said um, there are there are outlets I gave them to you right for you know various various things and they're in the outline call those numbers there are people at the other end all right there are people at the other end they may not yet be in an office but they are there are people at the other end of those 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 phone numbers and they can help you in you know in, in a variety of ways so as I said maybe just in closing as I said I like a bit of closure when it comes to the end of a course I don't know why so good luck I hope you enjoy the course right and again Good luck with all of your academic endeavors. Okay, thank you very much. All right.